Introducing... The Daredevils of Hollywood. Is that a this time, Mr. McKay? Yeah, and uh, look, Bob, I'd like to get this on the first take. All right, sir. Now, let's see. I'm supposed to ride the motorcycle right through the board fence and then crash into the house. Is that right? That's right, Bobby. The back of the fence has been sawed almost through, so it'll break easy. Okay. Well, here I go. I'll stand by for your signal. All right, everybody, this is it. Quiet, please. Quiet, Okay, turn him over. Boy, he's really making speed. This is going to be good. Keep those cameras on him. Look at him. Hit that wall. From Hollywood, the motion picture capital of the world, we bring you the thrilling true-life experiences of those men behind the scenes, those daring unsung heroes whose breathtaking adventures on the screen have thrilled millions, whose daily jobs bring them face to face with death, those men who comprise the strangest fraternity on earth, the Suicide Squad, the movie stuntmen, the Daredevils of Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, In bringing you this copyrighted radio feature, we have presented in the past some of the ace stunt men of Hollywood. But now we have a genuine surprise. We are privileged to have again as our guest a stunt girl of the movies, Miss Ione Reed. It is through her cooperation that we are able to reenact some of the highlights of her dangerous profession. The thrilling scenes you are about to hear are her own actual experiences. Miss Reed is here in the studio right now. And later in the program, we will bring her to the microphone. But first, let us dramatize for you some more of her thrilling experiences. As the brilliant California sun peeks over the horizon to light another new day in 1929, we see throngs of men and women walking briskly through the massive gates of a motion picture studio. Drivers of automobiles stop long enough to be recognized by the policemen on duty. Then they, too, hurry into this city of wonders to take their places in the vast machine. Presently, a sleek, high-powered roadster pulls up to the gate, bearing a beautiful young girl. She is dressed in sport clothes, and her smooth blonde hair blows gaily in the breeze. She is immediately recognized and admitted, and a few minutes later, we find her in the office of Mr. James Swanson, a director. Good morning, Mr. Swanson. I hope I'm not late. No, no, not at all. We probably won't shoot your scene until about 10 o'clock, anyway. Well, tell me, what am I supposed to do? The casting office didn't tell me much about it over the phone. Frankly, I own it's a very dangerous stunt. I wouldn't want to trust anybody with it but you, but I honestly feel that you can do it. It has something to do with trains, doesn't it? Yes. You're riding on top of a freight train with two men, and the brakeman gets after you. You run along the top of the train, crawl down the ladder on the side of the boxcar, and jump off. I see. How fast will the train be going? About 18 miles an hour. Oh, well, Mr. Swanson, that's very simple. In fact, there's nothing to it. Yes, but here's the dangerous part. There'll be a passenger train coming from the opposite direction on the other track. So when you and the two stuntmen jump off, you're supposed to run across the track right in front of the passenger train. How fast will it be going? To tell the truth, I own, it'll be wide open. Oh, I see. That does complicate matters a little, doesn't it? You see, it'll have to be close to look good. We're spending a lot of money on the scene, so I want it done, you know, successfully. That's why I had them call you. Okay, Mr. Swanson, we'll give it a try. After all, we've done some just as difficult. Fine, fine, I knew you'd do it. <laughs> In the San Fernando freight yards a few miles from Hollywood, workers from the studio have been busy since daylight preparing the location set. Everything is ready for the big scene. Miss Reed and the two stuntmen have planned the stunt out to perfection. Every movement has been carefully timed and checked. But even veteran cameramen and members of the crew who have witnessed hundreds of dangerous scenes are not able to conceal their nervousness. A loss of balance, a slip, a misstep will result in certain death. The freight train stands on the track. It seems to breathe like a living thing, feeling, too, the tenseness of the situation. While far in the distance, the passenger train stands waiting for the signal. We're ready any time you are, Miss Reed. I guess we're ready. How about it, boys? We're all set, I own. Now, remember, Mac gets off first, then I got off, and then you. And stay close behind Carl as you can. Three of us will run across the track in front of the passenger train one at a time. And I'm supposed to be last. Well, what's the hold back? Let's get going. Okay, here we go. All right, everybody. Come on, boys. Let's get it over with. Ready for cameras? Okay, okay for sound. Okay. All right. This is it. Now watch it, everybody. How about it, Ion? Okay, let her go. All right, Bill, give the signal. <laughs> Well, boys, 
Ralph, here we go. Let's do it the first time, then we can call it a day. Yeah, it's okay by me. I'm all set. Get ready. Almost there. Just one more thing, boys. Don't worry about me. Just do your bit and take care of yourself. I'll be all right. We'll start running at the first marker. Now get ready. Here it comes. Okay, Mac, go ahead. I'm right behind you. Come on, I own. Here comes the second marker. Start climbing down the ladder, Mac. Hurry, here comes the passenger train. Okay, Mac. Jump, there's your marker. Ah, he made it. Well, here I go, I own. Hurry, Carl, that passenger train's coming like a rocket. Hello, Carl, she'll never make it. The train's coming too fast. Don't try it, I own. You can't make it. Look out. She's going to jump anyway. Watch it, I own. Holy smoke, she fell right on the track. She can't get up. Look at that train. It's right on top of her. Ladies and gentlemen, through her miraculous quick wit and calm, cool thought in the face of great danger, Miss Ione Reed was able to walk away from that scene unhurt. She stands here at my elbow right now, an inspiring picture of beauty and health. It is with extreme pleasure that we present this courageous young girl, interviewed by Hal Stiles. Well, Miss Reed, my curiosity is still very acute. Tell me, how on earth did you get out of that tight spot? Well, when I fell on the track, I knew I didn't have time to get up and run, so I just rolled just made it between the two trains. Must have been very close. It certainly was. Those trains looked as big as mountains. And did you just lie there until the two trains had passed each other? That's right. Of course, that wasn't the way the story was supposed to be, so we had to do it over again. You mean you had to actually do that dangerous stunt twice? No, not twice. We had to do it five times. Something went wrong every time, but we finally got it right. Well, that must have been some fun. Incidentally, it's almost amazing that such an attractive girl as yourself would be in this dangerous business. (laughs) It's a good thing this isn't television, and maybe you wouldn't say that. I certainly would, and television would prove it. I only wish our listeners could see just how attractive you really are. Thanks, that's very nice of you. Now, tell me, how did you happen to get into the stunt business? Well, I used to play leads in Western pictures. There were always some kind of stunts to do, and I always did my own. Most of them were horse stunts. You know, jumps, pickups, falls, things like that. I see. And one thing led to another, and finally I was doing all kinds of stunts. I suppose you've had quite a lot of close calls, haven't you, Miss Reed? Yeah, I have. Have you ever been injured? No. No, not seriously. Just a few ribs broken. My nose was fractured once when I was doubling for Clara Bow. You, you probably remember the picture, Crawler Savage. Yes, I remember it very well. And they called me out on location. I didn't even know what I was supposed to do until I got there. I walked in on the set and... Oh, pardon me, Miss Reed. Uh, We'll learn what happened in just a moment, but this is where we hear from our sponsor. All right, Miss Reed, now, carry on. Well, when I went on the set, they were waiting. All right, then, Miss Reed, we're ready for your scene. Now, you just ride that horse up by that rock over there, and when the horse sees the snake, he'll rear up and... Wait a minute. Who's going to ride what horse up to what snake? Why, you are, Miss Reed. Oh, Oh, no. Listen, mister, I don't like snakes. They're out of my line. Maybe you better get somebody else. Oh, we can't do that, I own. You're already made up for the part. You're all dressed. Oh, it'll be all right. I'm sure it will. But I still don't like snakes, and I have no reason to think they like me. Now, look. Now, look here. That's a ten-foot rattlesnake, but he's harmless. You see, they extracted his fangs. He can't hurt you. Oh, no. He can scare me to death. I I don't like it. But I'll do it. (laughs) Fine. Now, uh, just ride up to the snake, and when the horse rears up, you fall off. That's all there is to it. What do I do, fall on top of the snake? No, but fall as close to him as you can. Okay, I still don't like it, but here you go. <laughs> okay, everybody. All right, places, this is a take. Okay, camera. All right, go ahead, I hope. Cut! Cut! No, I'm afraid that's not close enough, I own. Uh, can't you get the horse up closer to the snake? This horse doesn't exactly like that snake any better than I do. Go, oh, boy. Go, oh, boy. Take it easy there. Steady there, boy. Steady. Oh! You oh. hurt, Miss Reed? Why? Why, the horse swung his head and hit her right in the nose. I'll bet it's broken. Come on, I own. Get down. We'll take you to the hospital. Hospital, my eye. I'm just mad enough to make this scene now. Come on, I'll get this horse up to that snake if I have to push him. Okay, if that's the way you feel. All right, we'll take it. Ready, everybody? Camera! Go ahead, I own. Look! He's right on top of the snake this time. Falling off! Look! The 
snake struck at her and missed. Oh, get out of the way, I own. Oh, man, what a shot. Well, Miss Reed, that certainly was exciting. But if the snake was harmless, I don't suppose you were in any great danger. <laughs> That's the funny part of it. I found out later that the snake was as deadly as any rattlesnake. His fangs had not been removed. After I fell off the horse and rolled out of the way, Claire Bow came into the scene and actually killed that snake with a riding whip. It was a wonderful shot. It certainly was. I remember it very well. And how about your nose? That was very painful, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. But in a way, I didn't mind so much. I'd wanted a new nose for a long time anyway, and here was a chance to get one on the house. Well, that certainly was an optimistic viewpoint, Miss Reed. I can truthfully say that you have more spunk than any girl I have ever met. We have enjoyed your exciting experiences more than we can possibly say. And on behalf of our listeners, I want to sincerely thank you for coming here. I know that everyone joins me in wishing you the very best of luck. Goodbye, and thank you again. 